think we all feel somewhat outdistanced by the problems, the scale, the scope, the urgency of the problems really confronting humanity and the planet. And so Roger and I really wanted to put to the test um, whether social entrepreneurs were up to this challenge, whether in fact there was a role for social entrepreneurs to play in tackling big systemic problems like inequality, like poverty, like um, lack of human rights, like climate change, and see whether social entrepreneurs were in fact playing a role in solving these, solving the, these problems. And that's really what led us to this question of how societies change, how these big structural advances actually, actually happen. And there we came to the conclusion that really most social change has been driven either by government through policy innovation, through massive policy innovations. You have the Magna Carta in this country, you have the Civil Rights Act in the US, these, these massive, massive moments of change that, that governments drive. And then the other, of course, crucible of change is business and business innovation. And so you have these fantastic agents of change whose innovations have really um, driven societies forward in, in uh, really significant ways. Uh, so that's kind of the macro, the macro environment, understand the role social entrepreneurship can play. The micro answer really tracks to our founder, Jeff Skoll, himself a phenomenal entrepreneur, one of the co-founders of, of eBay, who decided with his philanthropy that he really was attracted to a special kind of leader. That was an individual who brought the discipline and the drive and the the a determination to disrupt something that just wasn't optimal for much of humanity um, with the same, uh, the same spirit of an entrepreneur, a business entrepreneur. Jeff is a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, and he saw these other characters worldwide who were doing the same, who were bringing the same kind of um, ability to solving societal problems. And that really resulted in the Skoll Foundation's emphasis on social entrepreneurs. And with that, really, Roger, um, of course, is, a, is an incredible asset, as you can imagine, on our board with his deep, deep knowledge of strategy. And he felt it was important for us to be more rather than less clear about what we meant uh, by calling someone a social entrepreneur, by defining social entrepreneurship. And that led us to um, uh, co-author a piece, uh, Social Entrepreneurship, The Case for Definition, which we published in the Stanford Social Innovation Review in 2007. And in that, uh, in that um, piece, we argued that social entrepreneurs drive equilibrium change. And so that is the central hypothesis that we bring to our work with social entrepreneurs at the, at the foundation. There is an unjust equilibrium, there is an unjust status quo, and the social entrepreneur doesn't aim for incremental improvement. The social entrepreneur aims to transform that system for the actors, for society, sustainably and permanently. And so um, with that article, we really, uh, we sent a shot over the bow of, um, of the, you know, the emerging field. And um, fast forward, uh, eight years later, we have a portfolio of 91 social entrepreneurs. It was time to go back and to test that, to test that hypothesis, to test that thinking, and to share what we've learned since. And it's been a a uh, fun journey if I just p uh, pick up on, on that because uh, you know, at the Skoll Foundation we realized uh, back 15 or so years ago uh, that there wasn't a really clear definition of social entrepreneurship but we had a belief that there was something that we could do that was uh, really important and so we've tried to be uh, reflective practitioners as we go along we're trying to learn more and develop a more precise uh, way of understanding social entrepreneurship so that we can pick uh, social entrepreneurs to support in the most intelligent way we can and most importantly support them the most. So in figuring out how they do what they do well, what seems to work better versus, versus not, uh, and that's part about defining social entrepreneurship and a part about saying here's how they do it, here are the success models. Uh, we, we hope to both help existing social entrepreneurs, uh, help uh, funders of social entrepreneurship pick and support social entrepreneurs who then do well because the better social entrepreneurs who are funded charitably do, the more charitable organizations will uh, be interested in, in funding them. Uh, but one thing, one thing I would say that was a, a stunner to, uh, to Sally and I, we, we, I mean, we were, we were sort of acting like often entrepreneurs do. They, the, they are the best customer for their product and they hope and imagine other people will like the product too. So the article, the Stanford Social Innovation Review article was for us 
was for us to be able to do a better job at what we were doing. And we were sort of actually surprised at, at how interested other people were in it. And that's one of the reasons for, for writing, uh, writing a book, because it seemed to interest other people too.